Hi again. We're in Nelson Barber, Charles Days Russell, Three Worlds, Plan of Redemption, page 96. Uh, Barber is dealing with the system of jubilees, which he assumes is a, another corroboration of the general chronology to which both Russell and Barber were committed. And he goes on, the whole system of Sabbaths was one continuous round of cycles, and multiplying one into another, and we have positive instruction that it points to something to come in which it is to be fulfilled and that it cannot pass away until all be fulfilled. Hence the sabbatic cycles must in some way continue in, in active operation. Otherwise they have passed away and passed without a fulfillment. But as they cannot thus pass away, they do continue. Still it may be said, neither Jew nor Gentile have recognized them for nearly 3,000 years. This is true and can be explained thus. This system of cycles in its very nature enlarges, even in its typical character, the increase was from a cycle of one week up to that of 50 years. And while the smaller cycles would naturally be brought to their continual notice, the larger ones would be of less immediate interest and the one of 50 years would pass over thousands who would never expect to see it consummated. And although their inheritance might have fallen into the hands of aliens, they would look forward to its restitution merely for their children. A multiple of the sixth Sabbath, or 50th year, into itself is an immense cycle, and notwithstanding, God has promised to bring them back to their own land, that they shall be restored to their former estate, etc. Yet so large as has, has been this cycle that the Jew himself has lost this reckoning and in the hardness of his heart forgotten to count. But though the watchman hath slept, he that keepeth Israel will not slumber. Heaven and earth may pass, but one jot of the law shall in no wise pass till all be fulfilled. Though fifty times fifty is a large cycle, the, the restitution spoken of by the mouth of all the holy prophets the Sabbath of rest that remaineth to the people of God will surely come. Since this feature of the sabbatic law must have a fulfillment, and there is no other way of continuing the jubilee cycles. If they ceased some thousands of years ago, then the jubilee cycles passed away without a fulfillment. But they did not pass away, no matter how much men may have been in darkness. The inheritance lost to the Gentile beasts of the earth is to be restored, and the great jubilee cycle has been running its round, and we are now both the fleshly and the spiritual children in the midst of the events connected with its termination. The harvest of the world has come, the transition period from the gospel to the times of the restitution. The fig tree is putting forth its leaves, and the shadow of coming events can be seen by those who are walking in the light. It does not seem to me possible that the whole Bible has been arranged so that the law, the prophetic numbers, and the chronology of the 6,000 years should all appear to end just where the two parts of Zion's warfare happen to be equal, or even that a plausible argument could be found bringing in a harmonious ending from so many sources unless there was some truth in these things. If it be asked, how do you know the sixth Sabbath, or 50th year, should be multiplied into itself to reach the next great jubilee, my answer is, I do not know it. I only know that there seems to be no other way of continuing the cycles, which certainly were a part of the law, and that God has arranged the scriptures so that we can get the starting point, that is, the, the end of the last jubilee under the law, where this great cycle must begin, if anywhere, and get it with absolute certainty on the same chronology that brings everything else to this harmonious termination, and also that there are two entirely distinct ways of tracing this, reckoning through more than 3,000 years, and by each, the same day, the 6th of April, 1875, is reached, and I cannot believe such absolute accuracy should come by chance, therefore I have to believe it comes from God. April 6, 1875, I have to believe that it comes from God. So this spirit of arrogant certitude that we see here, yes, it's kind of cushioned by a, a humility of, I can't know it, but I know it nevertheless, and I am preaching it. This kind of 
arrogant certitude, uh, of course, led Russell to be very bold in his predictions about 1914. So I'll we'll put a link into the seven predictions in the time is at hand for the year 1914.